rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly sky. And here at the PBA Seniors Invitation to Showboat, Robert Gibbs of Abilene, Texas, wins it by two pins, 165 to 163. Let's go back to 1968. Who will ever forget this site? I was the anchorman of ABC's telecast there, and I'll never forget being back in the studio watching you devastate your opponent, George Foreman, and carried around that American flag, and here you are in Las Vegas. <laughs> Still carrying around something, not the flag <laughs> these days, but getting ready to have a fight. On the uh, 16, Allison Rodriguez, it'll be uh, with Mike Tyson fighting Henry Tillman. You could probably uh, defeat Rodriguez and then meet Tyson. Yeah. Same night. Anytime. Anytime. Yeah, I know anytime. you well. That's the way I feel these What's days. What's your uh, plan after Rodriguez? Well, I'm going to uh, probably try to get that win. That's most important. You can't yes. count the chickens before the hatch. Then instantly be matched with Mike Tyson maybe in September. Mm -hmm. That'll settle everything. Then I'll get the chance to fight for the title. Bo, you had a bowling question, I think, for George. Well, George Foreman, uh, obviously one of the greatest boxers of all time. Uh, tell us about your bowling, and uh, you can stay around and pick a winner here for us. <laughs> all I can do is chunk that ball <laughs> and just hope that it hits those uh, pins out there. But no way could I compete with these guys. They're just too good. Too much English they put on the ball. Well, thank you for coming by, George, and good luck in your match. Thank you. Yeah, George, great to see you again, uh, and I hope someday we can do boxing together well, once more. Come by Caesars. Get oh, good tickets. I know okay. you'll do well. Good luck. Right. See you, champ. George Foreman, one of the really nice guys that I've ever met. And a heck of an expert commentator on boxing on television. Here's the winner of that first game, Robert Gibbs, also from Texas, like George. So leaving the 10 pin, Nelson. Robert Gibbs, uh, let's see if he loosens up a little bit after winning that first match in kind of a shocking manner as his opponent, Buzz Oswald, opens in the 10th frame, sliding by the 1-2-4. Gibbs has been practicing a lot. He says 10 or 12 games every day, has lost 60 pounds in the last year, and it's all beginning to pay off here on the Seniors Tour, but he has a very tough opponent in Tita Semez's second match. Left. And uh, tension released there after his two pin victory in the first game. Robert Gibbs. Now, here he is, five time seniors champion, three time regular tour champion of the PBA, Tita Semez. Leaving a 6 10. Tita trying to go directly towards the pocket as you see the five-step delivery of Tita Semez, and I think his delivery is better now than even when he was bowling 10 years ago on the regular tour. He's got a much longer, straighter arm swing, good follow-through, good knee bend, in absolute top shape. Dominant player out here on the Seniors Tour. Just does get it. Yeah. One of the real, real demonstrative professionals we've seen in any sport, having known him now for 30 years. He almost slides by the 6'10", but no problem. All you have to do is touch the pins. You have almost 24 inches to convert a pin, a single pin, especially like the 6-pin. Took advantage of all of that on that particular shot. Tita with three national titles beat me for one of them in 1970 and when he gets it going can get red hot one time in league in the mid 60s bowled 299, 268, 300, 867 one of the highest in the nation and the man that had a 300 here yesterday Tita Semez second frame strike his opponent Robert Gibbs has just joined us, defeated Buzz Oswald, 165 to 163. The winner of this game will meet uh, John Hersena of Franklin, PA, and then our tournament leader, the great Earl Anthony. Robert a little wide on that shot, and he's been taking some instructions from one of my good friends that's on the board of directors at the PBA, Lou France. Lou and I won our, as you see, his ball sliding by and leaving the two pin. Won the national team together in 1965. Lou operates the bowling center in Abilene, Texas, where Robert comes into practice and basically said that 
Lou has him working on his knee bend, and if there's one place he could improve is get a little bit lower at the line to get that bounce out of the ball. He's 6'2 and 248 pounds. Standing room only crowd here at the showboat where we have been coming now for 29 years, the entire span of our ABC telecasts. Gibbs playing a conventional line, standing about the center of the lane. He'll slide right about the 20th board, as we call the center of the lane. He'll be playing a little bit more hook than we saw in the first game, right over the second arrow, trying to keep it wide. And another washout. A little too wide, though. <laughs> that is too wide, but he should have this shot down pat. He left the 1-2 in the first game, and then the 1-2-4-10 in the first game also, and he failed to convert it both times. What he needs to do is get that head pin once again over to the 10-pin zone. In his two other attempts, he didn't get over to the left of the head pin. The second time, he was too far. So just split the difference, Robert, and he should be right there. Ten earlier. Great shot. Uh, the only drawback to this frame for Robert Gibbs is the loss of pin county. Uh, with the six counties down to 35 in the second, and in a tight match game situation, that's very important. Now, Samez with a chance to take a 15 pin lead, third frame. Oh, Leaving a 3 6. Uh, he has uh, been involved in the, the finals four of the last six senior events that he's bowled, and as we indicated, he's won five, as has Dick Weber, the leading money winner, but Tita is second, 104,000. Earlier, we asked Tita how the seniors tour compares with the regular tour. Well, I think the guys that uh, bowl late in their 40s and the early 50s uh, uh, who have kept themselves in shape all through the years uh, can probably compete on the regular tour as well as the senior tour. Tita Samez plays to a five handicap in golf. Oh, yes. Shades of the past. Tita Samez is striking the fourth frame and a five pin lead. Our second game will return. Shoot for strikes. It's the Fresno Open on ABC's Pro Bowler Spring Tour in two weeks. Robert Gibbs going for the 3-6. This is in the fifth frame while we were away. Going a little over our allotted time. Robert uh, had a strike only his third of the afternoon, but he has one game victory. Five pins. That's the lead Tita Samez has. Can increase it to 15. A strike up. He's shooting in the fifth frame. Hold it. Hold it. Talk to it, and it worked. Okay to bow. Thank you, Chris. John Hersena, you joined the PBA when you were 44 years old and must have been watching a lot of these players play. Are you intimidated going in a position round against the likes of Tita Semez or Earl Anthony? No, I'm not uh, intimidated. I'm, I'm just happy that I could uh, compete against these guys. I, I never had a chance when I was younger, and uh, it's just a dream come true, really. He's in top shape, Chris, and he's going to give him a tough time in the semifinal. Boy, he's looked good all week. Tita now. Get it! Get it! With that three-bagger, Tito, who got it, takes a 25-10 lead over Robert Gibbs. Other finishers, as we said, Jimmy Certain, 25th, Dave Sutar, 26th. Watch this reaction from the 56-year-old. Tito Samez, now Robert Gibbs. Spare up, six frame. He needed that. Only two strikes in his victory, 165 to 163, then strike in the fourth, now another in the sixth. Robert Gibbs has to loosen up here, and obviously one of his 
better shots coming right here in the sixth frame, but he trails uh, Tita Semez by 25 pins. Tita won't back up and come to him. Gibbs is going to have to throw some strikes to get back in the match. And with that strike, Robert Bay Gibbs has cut the lead to 15. We're in Las Vegas, where we'll return in a moment. Chrysler Triple Crown Challenge. It's the Belmont Stakes Live, next on ABC's Wide World of Sports. While we were away, Tita Semez, who had a comfortable lead, left the 3 6 7 10 in the seventh frame. Then, his spare ball, he left the 3 7 did come back in the eighth, though, with a strike. Three-pin lead held by this man. A two. Robert Gibbs, who looked like he was completely buried in the fifth frame, put together strikes in the sixth and seventh. Then Tita opens the door with the big split in the seventh frame. Now Gibbs, with a spare, will lead the match by two pins, sliding a little wide on lane 60. Once again, we see the players either going high on 60 or light. And that's that little hang spot, as Tita called it, about 45 feet down the lane. When you want the ball to hook in the pocket, it skids a little bit farther. You either have to go around it or point up in front of it. So unlike our first match, which this man won over Buzz Oswald, 165 to 163, going right down to the final two frames. Other finishers, Don Johnson, 42nd, Carmen Salvino, 41st. Our bowling c coverage continues in two weeks as the tour's top bowlers head to Northern California. $125,000 Fresno Open. Live coverage begins at June 23rd, 3 Eastern and Pacific, 2 Central. Two-pin difference in a match, ninth frame, foundation frame. Anybody can win. Second powerful crossover strike he's had today, and that coming in the big ninth. Robert Gibbs is... Uh, Following the saying, never up, never in. He's hitting the head pin every shot, either side. And he's had some good breaks. Key shot for Tita. Ninth frame trails by two pins. Can take the lead with a strike. Ten. Excellent bowler coming here to watch him. Tommy, 217 average, Tita said. He says, he's not quite ready for the big tour, but rooting for his dad. Big shot there for Tita, disappointed. Will trail by two pins going into the 10th with a conversion. Tommy, one of Tita's five children. Fine-looking young man. And if he grows up like his dad, he'll be okay. Gibbs wondering what the score is almost. He says, hey, I know I got a two-pin lead, but this is the last frame. Tita knows what's in front of me. Needs to throw a couple of strikes to regain the lead. Too wide, almost sends it out into the channel, has the big turn on it, and leaves himself a very difficult spare of the three, six, and nine. To have any chance in the match, Tita must convert this spare. Without the conversion, he can't win. First step. Now we notice that our tournament leader, the fabulous Earl Anthony, is up and uh, staying loose with an occasional shot on practice lanes off to our right, along with John Hersena who will meet the winner of this game. Tita Smith, possible 199. He'll force Gibbs to mark in the 10th and get a good count for victory. Another 10 for Tita. And he shoots a 198 here. Winner of five senior events, Tita Smith. Robert Gibbs needs a strike on this ball or a spare in five pins to win the match and go on to meet John Hersina in the semifinal. Must mark. No. His 
left. Not an easy spare. Right now, Hersena is looking over and saying, which player will I bowl against? Will it be Tita Semez or Robert Gibbs? Robert must convert the 1-2-8 and get five pins for victory. Remember, Oswald missed a combination very similar to this to lose the first match, the 1-2-4. They're very similar. to 190 victory. Tita Samaz over Robert Gibbs. Gave it his all out here in winning the first game over Buzz Oswald and that's how he lost it. This shot by Gibbs, not even close. Now it's time to join Nelson Burton Jr. for his bowling tip of the week and naturally a tip about seniors. Bo? Today's bowling tip of the week is for the senior citizens. And to help me with this tip is a veteran player, Burl Withers. Burl, as you've gotten a little bit older, I'm sure some problems have crept into your game. Tell me about them. Well, ball was dry lanes. I just don't seem to be able to get enough speed on the ball. Well, Burl, I've heard that all over the country from senior citizens and from some of the other players, and there's a couple reasons. Obviously, as you get a little bit older, you lose a little bit of that zip on the bowling ball. And secondly, the American Bowling Congress ruling on short oil the last couple years has allowed balls to hook a whole lot and people are losing control. Now let's take a look at a replay of how I control the short oil lanes and the big hook. First, I use a little more foot speed and secondly, the extra loft over the foul line, about three or four feet over the foul line. This delays the hook and allows you to control the ball on the dry lane surface. Now with that in mind, Burl, a little extra foot speed, a little extra loft and you'll have a good shot. The crowd tells you the story, you did it properly. Remember, to control dry lanes, hooking lanes, use a little more foot speed to the foul line and a nice loft three or four feet past the foul line and you'll have... It's open preview featuring Jack Nicholas tomorrow on ABC Sports. And here at the showboat with five strikes, Tita Samaz defeats Robert Gibbs 198 to 190. They started here this week, seniors, a total of 280 in the field, Bo. Chris, then a couple of good stops coming up at Fresno and then down to Phoenix for a hot one right in around the 4th of July weekend. And we'll take a look at some of the other players in the field. A big field, 208, 80 players, 204 average. The whole field, 192 to make the money. Here's some of the other great players. Glenn Carlson, Kelly in 7th place. George King from the St. Louis area. J.B. Blaylock, Spezio, Handegard still competing on the big tour. Brenner, Vandergriff. Brutally, Les Sykes, we all know him. Curtis, he's a winner out here on the Seniors Tour. Williams, a nice finish, 17th. Bill Johnson can play both sports, golf and bowling. Hart, an excellent player from Detroit area. Oliver Mabry, Glenn Allison, the 900 man. Kilburn and Harris, the 22nd, 23rd. Jack Horner, 24th, and there's the trophy. And one of the great players of all times with us, Carmen Salvino in the announce booth for the semifinal game. Carmen, looking forward to your comments. You ready, Hall of Famer? It's a pleasure to be here, and I have to say that it looks like Christmas came a little early for Tita Semez. Well, he uh, kind of backed into the match. Both both the matches have been uh, won by somebody opening in the 10th frame. Now we're ready for the semifinal. Tita's John Hersina and Tita Semez, Chris. Right. Tita 198 to 190 over Robert Gibbs. Gibbs winning the first match over Buzz Oswald. 165. 163. Any comment, Carmen Salvino? I'll tell you right now, uh, I think Tita's going to get loose. And uh, I've watched the line he's playing. He's playing the best line of everyone out there. The other players made a mistake. Like Bo said, the oil was migrating, and they stayed in too much in the center of the lane. Good point, and as you'll notice, Tita is playing the extreme outside line around the first arrow. Carmen.
assume it's obvious Tita and the others are enjoying the seniors tour. Are you? Oh, absolutely. It's it's a great uh, place for us to be, and uh, I see a great future for us because we get a lot of fans. People are, can relate to a lot of 30, 40 years. And John Hersena, who really works at this game, the 52-year-old from Franklin, Pennsylvania, the mail carrier runs a rural route every day. You see his style, kind of a four and a half step delivery, very strong in the upper body, has a short back swing, gets very low at the line, good lift and turn on the ball, and in top physical condition. He is out here to win. Leaving a three pin. You know, it's interesting, Chris, uh, Carmen can verify this. Uh, a lot of these seniors never had a chance to bowl as I did. There was no tour around. It was a team era, and there wasn't the availability of a professional bowler's tour. So guys like John Persin are getting their feet wet at the age of 50. So now back to Tita Samez, who opened with a spare, now shooting in the second frame. and sleeper eight. Very obvious, Carmen, and you can comment it on that little hang spot that uh, Tito was talking about. If you send the ball wide on the right-hand lane, it just doesn't come back. That's true, Boga. Also, if you look at the, Tito's style that time, Tito has a tendency to, when he gets under pressure, to pull up a little bit at the line, and I think that's why that ball didn't finish. Okay, good point. Good for all of us to remember. Stay down to the line all the times, but especially under pressure. All right. Our tournament leader, Earl Anthony, will meet the winner of this semifinal game. Two pins separating two pros. Take a look at the line that Tita's playing. Very conventional. He'll start about the middle of the approach with his feet. Well, he's not playing the line I thought. He's moving out to the extreme outside. He'll probably drift to the left slightly and then roll the ball right out around the first arrow. Extreme outside line. Two eight ten. Hmm. Well, and that's got to really confuse him because he had a shot there in the tenth frame where he went wide and then high, and here he has a very difficult spare. Or he has to take the two eight and hopefully bounce one of them into the ten pin. And I mean confused. He went wide in the tenth and went high, and here he pulls it and doesn't get up. To it. <laughs> Carmen talking about lane conditions. Uh, Everybody presumed that they put a pretty soft lane condition out for the seniors. Not so. Well, I'll tell you, the lane conditions I bowl on, I felt like I was in a jungle with a pocket and I tried to cut down trees. Down to Hurston. Tough out there. Very tough, huh? Don't forget, following us, next, Wide World of Sports, the final jewel in the Chrysler, Chrysler Triple Crown Challenge. Belmont Stakes. Kentucky Derby winner, unbridled. Bo, I know, has a pick. A pick I, for an upset. Country Day, 36 red will be the early speed. Foreign horse, go-go. And whatever horse runs like John Herson is bowling, that's a big double in a 26-pin lead here in Las Vegas. Our national championship. Live 18-hole coverage of the U.S. Open begins next Saturday on ABC Sports. As we're running a little behind while we were away, Tita Samez, at whom you're looking, left the 10 pin marked with a spare. Now he will try to cover the 2 4 in the fifth frame. And that he does, uh, Carmen, with a lot of ease, now trailing by 28. But first, Carmen, let's go to Bo. Thank you, Chris. Tournament leader Earl Anthony. It's been a while since you bowled for a title, Earl, and you've been unlucky at the showboat. A bad town to be unlucky in seven seconds here. Any game plan? Not really, just be aggressive, boy. I've changed my, my game style, as you know. I got a lot of help from a good friend at home, Dean Johnson, at Park Lanes. He's really helped me with my game, so I'm just going to try to be aggressive, keep the ball really firm. Chris, he's never won here. He has another, one more chance in about 10 minutes. Back to you. Okay. Now, Carmen Salvino, 4-10 for Ursina. I'll tell you, it looks like on the uh, length 60, if you let up a hair, the ball wants to jump. Yet if you throw it too far to the right, it wants to have a little skid-out pattern. So 
it looks like the more sensitive of the two lanes, and I think the one that can master that lane is going to win the match. John now, his lead has been cut to 14, shooting in the sixth frame of the semifinal game. Mm. 210 split, much easier to convert than the 2810 that was left by Tita Semez in the third frame. Ball goes wide for John. He needs to get the ball just to the left of the two pin and drive it over into the 10. He's quickly up. Many a good tune been played on an older violin. Beautifully done. Key shot in the match. Keeps the pressure on Tita Semez. Drives the two in the 10. Has a 14 pin lead, six frame. Didn't come up. One, two, four, eight. Carmen Salvino, Tita Semez, definitely confused out there. What would be your game plan if that happened to you? Well, it looks like he's lost the release and he's picking up at the line, like I said earlier. Uh, what I would do is tone down my feet, stay behind the ball, and try to get a little ball reaction, and then from then on, try to make my adjustments and see if I can get a double someplace and win this match. That's a good, good point, especially under pressure. A lot of players try to put more and more power on the ball. Carmen Salvino says get a little more accuracy, work on keeping that ball in play, and that's uh, good advice for anyone. Now, Tita Semez trails by 18, seventh frame. Carmen, you finished 41st in this event. Right behind you was Don Johnson, who lives in Las Vegas. Yes, I was glad to see Don back in the tournament. He's a great credit to the sport of bowling. All right, Tita had a strike in the first, third, and fourth, and now gets another in the seventh. We'll be back. It's the Fresno Open on ABC's Pro Bowler Spring Tour in two weeks. By missing the 6, 7, 10 in the seventh frame for an open in the eighth. Now 1, 2, 8, 10, Ursina. Makes it. Getting a little excellence out here. Biggest shot of the day for Tita Semez. He trails by two pins, strike up in the seventh, eighth frame. He can take the lead as you see Hersena's conversion of the washout. Now Tita, right hand lane. Come on, come on. Now a five, seven. What a freaky shot. Actually, he has going to rip the five pin out and the ball kind of, watch this pin action. The ball drives through the five pin. A pin has to come off the sideboard and it kind of paralyzes that five pin. You see the head pin came off the sideboard and knocked the four into the seven. Tremendously unusual. Tita with a real bad break and now a tough split to convert. So for Tita, an open in the eighth frame, back to trailing by 14. Carmen Salvino, you surprised at this scoring out here today, considering how good these players really are. Yes, I'm very surprised, but at the same time, it seems like the oil's migrating down there even more so, and as a result, they should have kept moving to the right. I'm surprised that Tita, an experienced player like that, hadn't realized that. Uh, that's the only thing I'm really surprised at. Good point, Carmen, and once again, Tita, not making that move you were talking about, stays inside, the ball slides by the head pin, and right now he trails by 14 pins. He's going at a 166 pace. His opponent, John Hersina, at a 180 pace. The match is still up for grabs. Spare in the ninth frame, Tita Semez, who won the earlier game over Robert Gibbs, 198 to 190. The mailman, John Hersena, Franklin, Pennsylvania. Well, the 6-7-10 split in a critical situation as his family looks on, kind of in shock. Now, I don't really disagree with the type of shot he tried to play there. Under the pressure, he tried to ram the ball into the 1-3 pocket. Not a bad idea. He gets a bad break, though, going high. The 6-7-10 split. 
The man who has done a seventh championship round appearance in 12 senior tournaments. And that family is certainly disappointed, including his wife, Susan. Four children, John Jr., Bill, Sandy, and Valerie. As John stands up in the 10th, the match is all even a possibility of a tie in the semifinal. Six ten. Avoids the six seven ten split again. Gets a good break here in the tenth frame. Needs to convert to six ten. Tita knows what the story is. If his opponent marks and strikes, he'll need at least a double to win. John didn't take any time at all. Tops the ten off the six. Chris, the only thing I can say is that these fellows have not been around the national championship environment for a long enough time to really adjust the pressure. They, they, he was a little quick on that shot, as you mentioned, and he has really opened the door for Tita Semez. Gibbs did it, opened in the 10th, the last match to hand the match to Tita. All he needs is a spare or strike, and he'll go on to meet Earl Anthony. Make a good shot. Yeah. That he did. ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowlers Spring Tour will be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Stakes will begin in a little more than 20 minutes. A field of nine going postward in the final leg of the Triple Crown. Take a look at the odds of most unusual betting pattern developing. 36 red is the favorite. He was 8 to 1 on the morning line, but as you see, he is 2 to 1. Unbridled number 5, the Kentucky Derby winner, who figured to be odds on, is 3 to 1. And continuing on, there is moderate support, as you see, for a video ranger. Yonder and Land Rush. The Belmont comes your way 4.30 Eastern. See you then. Right now, back to Chris Schenkel. Thank you, Al. And here at the showboat, Tita Samaz winning his second match over John Hersena, 175 to 155. So now two proven champions go into the championship match of the showboat PBA Senior Invitational. There they are, Jack Cook, the manager of the lanes. There is the chairman and CEO, Frank Modica, and Cliff Taylor, the executive vice president. Great hosts. We've been coming here since for 29 years. There's 49, and that means not only does the Showboat Hotel Casino have the largest bowling center in the United States with 106 lanes, it now houses the largest bingo parlor, the 1,500-seat Bingo Gardens. Well, on Friday, customers were treated to their first glimpse of this luxurious room. This latest addition is part of a major renovation and expansion project at the Las Vegas Resort. President and CEO Frank Modica calls the building a bright new showboat, and here is still a bright <laughs> senior, many-time Hall of Fame champion Dick Weber. Well, thank you very much, Chris and Bo. It's very nice to be with both, and I uh, hope we see an exciting match here. Uh, you know, the, the score's been pretty low, but uh, I think things will change now with two champions we have out there now. Okay, you and Tita each has won five senior titles. Here's Tina going. Tita going for number six, but... Earl Anthony is his opponent. <laughs> That's the tough part, Chris. Mm -hmm. Although, remember, Earl has never won at the showboat. Seven second place finishes. And what a way to, to open. Hmm. Kind of a psych job there, Chris. Uh, Tita has always had trouble beating Earl. Tita had a chance to win the Firestone in 1978, and he bowled Earl in the championship round. Earl beat him 237 to 192. Tita never got untracked, and there's certain uh, psychological advantage to uh, Earl Anthony right here in this match. All right, so it's an open frame. Tita giving himself uh, motivation hand class coming back to the set tee. Now here he is. Hall of Famer. 41 regular titles. One senior. 43 second place finishes. Would you say, Mr. Weber, that was awesome? Well, yes, it is. Anytime you watch Earl Anthony Bull, it's awesome. But, you know, he's made such a change in his game. I, I'm surprised when I first came to Showboat here that this year that uh, 
he's more upright and throwing the ball a little bit harder than he uh, normally does. Good point, Dix. First thing I noticed also, he's a much longer swing. He's about nine inches higher with his back swing. It makes his pendulum much longer, and he feels like he needs that on today's lanes conditions, which hooks so much more than they did ten years ago. And Earl put, immediately puts the pressure on his opponent, Tita Samez, jumping out to a 21 pin lead with the double. The great pin action, head pin to the sideboard, drives out the 3, 6, and 10. A little action on the 7th, and he has Tita in trouble in the early going. Great comeback by a five-time senior champion, three times the regular tour after an open to strike in the second for Tita. Tita, who has been somewhat confused in his two matches out here today, he has never really got lined up to the 1-3 pocket. Made a little bit of a change that time. He went harder and straighter towards the pocket, giving up some of that hook ball. And I think that's the smartest thing he can do. We can remember Hamleto Monicelli winning here three years ago using the same technique. Forget the big hook, go straight at the 1 3 pocket. Oh, oh. All right, and that double puts Tita in good position now. But Anthony is up. 11 pin lead by the native of the state of Washington. He's going to like it, the trip four. And then came the stopper, 7-10, replaying the form and the shot. Earl quickly up, taking a whack at the seven pin, uh, unhappy with that shot. And I'll tell you what happened right after we see him go with the seven pin here. Is very simply, Chris, he's got a much longer arm swing than he used to have. Now watch Earl's arm swing. He'll lose this ball at the bottom of the swing, something he never did with the short arm swing. See it above his head. He gets his shoulders forward, and that ball just slides off that thumb. I noticed him three or four times last night lose the ball at the bottom of the swing. And he told me to before we went on the air, if there's any danger to his game, is that losing the ball off his thumb. So let's see if he can recover as he's dropped behind Tita Semez, fourth frame. Led by 21 at one point. Instead, a 4-6-10. The feel of the bowling ball, all so important. Now, whether your name's Earl Anthony or anybody else, you must feel comfortable as you see Earl squeezing the ball a little bit here in the fourth, drifting high has left the 4-6-10 split. He'll just go for the 6-10, and he'll be in trouble. All right, we're in the championship match of the Showboat PBA Seniors Invitational. More after this. Room only crowd. This is the championship match. Tita Semezu trailed by 21 leads by 14, a double up. Well, Dick Weber. Well, you know, Tita's been fighting that lane all the way through, even in practice. And, and uh, in fact, uh, that particular shot, he really thumbed the ball, what we call thumb the ball. It's never got the thumb out of the ball at all. And, and it really an overturned shot, pull shot, ter terrible bad shot. And almost more importantly, lost a lot on pin count. When you get a six count, then eight out on the fill ball with a double up, your count drops, drops dramatically. And now he trails Earl Anthony by four pins. The action must pick up right here. There's six frames left for the championship. Both players proven winners. They'll go right now to the whip, Chris. Mm -hmm. Right there. Two opens for Tita, but that's his third strike in this championship game. Anthony with two strikes, two opens, now shooting in the fifth. Earl Wolf, one of four men to go over a million dollars. The first man, Pete Weber, one of those players, Roth and Holman. <coughs> Millionaire is right here in the booth with us, Dick Weber. 
great strike by Earl Anthony. We ask Earl if, after such a superlative career, are there any bowling goals remaining? Oh, boy, I, I don't really have any goals so much as just to really more than anything not embarrass myself when I come out here. So I've been working very hard on my game. If I can make good shots, I'm happy. And everybody's glad to see him out. And right now, he can extend his lead to 14 with a strike in the sixth. A nine. I don't think he was happy with a shot in the first place, but he uh, really reared up a little bit hoping to get close to the pocket, but it uh, was a really great shot at all. Well, I think you're right there, Dick. Plus, these players aren't in competition year-round like the touring players, and it does sh uh, show up under the pressure, but it's match play competition, and it's a very tight match. Four-pin difference. Okay. Earl Anthony, who in the 70s won over 30 tournaments. Dick Weber, who has won in about five decades, is here with Nelson Burton and me, and we have watched this man over the years perform. Key, key shot for Tita right now. He's struggling on the right lane. He has a strike up, can retake the lead. And that was really a sweet shot. And remember that little words he said about it an hour ago, the hang spot on the right-hand lane. It's given him problems. He hit right on that hang spot, as we call it that time. The ball normally would have finished solid in the pocket. Tita comes away with just the 10-pin. <laughs> If he converts this spare, he'll still trail by four. Uh-oh. What a hurrying going on here today. Yeah, you're right, Chris. I, you know, these players are so experienced, and I know they've been away from the limelight for a few years, but Tita and, and Earl especially uh, don't need to hurry up their shots. They know this is match game title situation. Collect those thoughts and take a few extra seconds now. The match is not over, but Tita trails by 16. And gets them all. Tita Samez in the seventh train, a strike. Title game, Seniors Invitational at the Showboat in Las Vegas. We'll be back. With a spare covering a three pin in the seventh, then in the eighth, a strike. Very close match against Tita Samez for the $13,000 champion's share here at the showboat. Tita Semez in the sixth frame had a strike up, had a chance to tighten the match. Once again, the eighth frame, he can cut Earl's lead to five pins with a strike. Crossing over and leaving a 3-10. Dick Weber, it's just a shame. Tita's not even close, and it's really not his fault. He leaves a 10-pin, he moves over just maybe a half a board, and he's run high. It, well, like you say, he rushed his shot a little bit, and there's no need for it, being a, a veteran of, of the sport like he is, but uh, it, he's just so hesitant about lanes, uh, the right lane, that uh, it tightens everything up. And can't get a free shot. Well, Earl Anthony doing his best bowling sitting on the bench right now. Every time Tita gets up, he gives Earl a few pins back. Mm -hmm. Imagining sitting on the bench, I won a tournament here sitting on the bench a couple of times. Not a bad position. No. Tita still has a chance, needs some strikes. Where did the split? Left the four. You know, Dick, because of you and the two bowlers we're watching, we have viewers all walks of life. I want to send best wishes to an automobile Hall of Famer who at Cedars Sinai this week received a heart transplant. He's a pal of mine, the great Carol Shelby. Well, let's send the best to Carol. Our down. prayers will be with him. Yes. For Earl Anthony, he can win the tournament with this shot. A strike here in its lock city. If not, he needs to mark in the ninth and 10th frames for his first victory at the Showboat Lanes. That's a head holder. <laughs> well, obviously confused. Earl, when he went down to one knee, thought he had the winning shot in hand, and now he opens the door wide open. He has to take a look at the scoreboard right now, which he is doing. He's taking a look up, trying to figure out what he must do. He's got a six count as you see him go right through the middle. He thinks this is a strike. Ball flips over and opens the door for Tita Semez. The match is up for grabs.
game never gets easy. No, it doesn't, Chris. You know, Bo, I think he uh, let up on the shot a little bit, do you? Well, he tried to aim the ball. He's been a little bit light each time on there, and to going for the win, he softened up. I agree with you, Dick. Went high, but that's not all over yet. He now has a lead of 13 pins, needs a spare and eight to lock up the title. All right, the man appearing in his 117th telecast and over that span of averaging 217, Earl Anthony. The average is going to drop a little bit on this telecast, yeah, but right. he's going to walk away with a victory. He needs eight pins on two balls. He's already checked out the scoreboard, and this will be his second senior's title, and I'm sure there'll be more to come. There's a man that won the Firestone twice. And I know he would tell you that this is one of the more difficult championship matches that he's ever been in. Ups and downs, Dick, all the way through. Earl, besides bowling the seniors tour, will bowl some of the regular tour stops. Be interesting to see how he does out there among the younger set. So Earl Anthony has come through as the tournament leader, shot a 180 here in this championship match. That's $13,000 for Earl. And Tita Samez will just finish, but he is a runner-up and will receive $7,000 as Frank Modica comes out to present the trophy and check to the great Earl Anthony. And for us here at ABC, it was our first seniors telecast. We thoroughly enjoyed it. And, of course, Bo will be back in two weeks. Dick, thank you very much. And for Larry Cam, who goes to the Tour de France, our director, we look forward to seeing you next year on our tour. There's the winner, Earl Anthony, second seniors, 43rd overall. Okay, it is 180 for Earl Anthony, and we'll be back in two weeks in Fresno, California. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the Belmont Stakes.